All right, so I got my DRO kit. It's a $300 one off of eBay. And so I figured that unlike the other videos where they start with how they installed it, and then we don't ever get to see how accurate it is, I figured I'd start the other way, show it installed, and then I gotta take it off anyway because I gotta seal up the little seals behind the guards and I gotta paint this and do some. So this is on a gearhead mill, but it'd be very similar on one of the little small, like the uh, RF 30s, 31s. I have one of those as well, we'll look at it in a minute. So what I got set up right now is I'm on the Z axis, and this is actually the toughest axis. I'll go through how I installed this thing to get it this much accuracy, because a lot of the videos that I saw, they were hooking it up to this, or they had little scales hooked up to this, or they made some arms and things. But one thing I noticed, and we'll go over to the table and I'll show you why, is that these scales are super sensitive to movement this way or this way. And so if you hook it up just to this, that whole thing moves just a little bit and it would break the scale or throw the scale off tremendously. So let's just see right here how accurate this thing is. So I'm set up on zeros and on my Z axis right here on my little uh, indicator, I'm at zero. So if I go down, let's say I crank down an inch. We'll come down here. Because this was one of my biggest curiosities, just how accurate these things would be. And so let me put it right on one. So you can see right here, if you could see that, the, it's off by about a thousand. So just straight out of the box, it's off about a thousand based on the scale. But we can compensate for that because it's got a neat little function that if we go over here to the display and say I want to compensate, I just have to hit the Z and then I go into compensation. So it asks for the standard. The standard would be that gauge. So I say that gauge read 1.001. The DRO read 1. And so then I just hit enter. And now it compensates. And so it puts it with, when it's a, an inch and a thousand, it puts it almost at an inch and a thousand. So then, if I go back and check it again, we'll run it back. So we're right at, right at zero, so I'm still sitting on zero. And so now if I run it up here to the inch, Now, it's reading right on an inch. So it's super simple. Even if it's off just the little thousandth, I mean, I'm not worried about a thousandth on the Z-axis for sure. But if I was worried about it, I can compensate for it. So then we can check in the middle. We can run back to say half inch and see how well it reads a half inch. So there's a half inch and now it's reading right on a half inch. So pretty easy to do. You can uh, adjust the compensation if needed based on how it's distance away from it or something like that that throws the scale off. The uh, X and Y axis are actually really accurate uh, coming out of the box too. They were off about a thousand. So let's say I come over here on my scale. These scales on, on the machine are pretty accurate. So if I go to zero, I zero my X. Now I count one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I come back to zero. Then it's reading right on one. So really accurate on that axis. The other axis is as accurate. So these scales are pretty good. It's just this movement in the Z that uh, causes a little bit of problem on the setup. So. With all that, let's go over to the bench and we'll see how accurate these little scales are based on side to side movement. All right, so we're over on the bench. This is actually another set I got for my lathe and uh, I got the uh, less expensive display. I like the LCD display, but I thought, hey, I'll get this one just to see how good it is. So it seems to be as good. It's just not as fancy, but it's got calculators and it's got all kinds of stuff on it. But just to kind of see what we're talking about, this is one of the scales. And uh, it's the same size as what's on the Z-axis over there. 
So if I push it all the way to the end, you can see it stays pretty good. And I got the little shipping thing in there. I actually used that to mount it. So what I did is put it all in there, left the little shipping thing in there, tightened it all up, took the shipping thing out. That way I knew everything was level and everything was where it needed to be. But here's what I wanted to show you. So if we look at the display, and all I got to do, let's say I move a little bit this way or this way, you can see that just any kind of side to side movement will take it off seven thousandths. You know, so then you don't know where you are. If you re zeroed it, then if it moves again, like on the Z axis, see, then it just keeps changing. And so its position is real sensitive this way as well as back and forth. So, like if I have it sitting, I just put it somewhere, and then I take the shipping thing out. You can see it changes it by eight thousandths, just dropping down that little bitty bit. So it's really important when you set them to make sure that nothing's going to move, and that's why it's real important on that Z axis that we figure out how to get a good Z to stay stable. So let's head over to the green mill, and I'll show you why. The z-axis, if you mount it a certain way, it's not going to be very accurate. Alright, so this is the other mill. This is a belt drive type, so it's the more common one. It's like the RF30 or 31 or whatever it is. One day I'm going to make this a CNC because now i got a nice uh, gear head. But I can show you what I'm talking about on the z-axis real easy on this one. So, let's say you were going to mill and you came down on your z-axis and locked it in. This is attached to the shaft, and the shaft is only held by this little screw that goes in that groove right there. But there's a ton of play in that little screw. And so you could imagine that as you were coming down, you don't know if you're to this side or this side, and that much movement is definitely going to throw those scales off. So if you were thinking to attach onto this with a scale, that much movement is really going to make that scale inaccurate. Or if you mount it onto here and came to the back or something like that, unless you isolated the scale and allowed for this motion, it's going to be really, really, really off on the Z. So we'll have a look see on what we did on the gearhead mill to compensate for that. And so what I ended up doing is actually freeing this up so it's not attached to it anymore, and it is allowed to move a little bit, but then I locked it down. So if I was looking at this one, uh, when we go over there, you could see that I would probably do the same thing. I would have to lose this little cover. And then inside of here, you'll see it's very similar on the gearhead mill, but I would mount my scale and then mount my pickup on this, stiffen this little guy up, free this up from the shaft, and then I could control the Z axis. So. Let's get set up over here on the gearhead mill and start taking some things off and see just how we put this on there. All right, so we'll start on the x-axis because it was by far the easiest one to do. So, like I say, I got to seal this up so nothing can get down in between my guard. So we'll take it off anyway. All right, so it comes with the guard that matches the length of it. And then it's got the little end pieces, so that's kind of nice. It also comes with, for each of the axes, it comes with a little bag of screws and some little plates you can chop up to mount things. And so those are handy. So for the X axis, it was super simple because there's already a groove, most cases, in the front of these mills. And so all I did was add a little piece of that aluminum plate back behind it to compensate for the piece of plate that's right here. That keeps those two guys level and it keeps it lined up so I know how to bolt it up. And then I just ran the screws in with the little things that used to be on these stops on the back of them. I just use them and so that mounted up. So I don't have to take that one off because all I got to do is seal up here. So that was real easy. The only other thing I had to do is extend my little lock because it had to be out far enough that I could get my hand on it. So that one was easy. This just mounts in, and as you can see, as you move the table, it just rides along on top of the sensor, the rear head. And I just put two little screws, drilled some holes in it, and then up here for the 
guard, we just drilled four little holes, tapped them, and away we go. And this metal is super easy to tap. So don't go oversize on your drill bits because you'll end up not having any threads. So try to be undersized or right on it for the size tap that you're gonna use. Drill your hole for that tap. So now let's go over to the Y axis because I actually need to take it off in order to make it pretty, paint it up and get it sealed up. For the Y axis, it was a little more complicated because you gotta have something to mount it to. And so let's take its little cover off. So for this axis, you got a little more to deal with. You got to have something to mount this to. And uh, so I just used a piece of angle and mounted it up to the table. But on the bottom, this has got an angle on it as well. So what I did is drilled the two holes to mount the plate. And then this plate runs right up behind it, just like the X axis. So it keeps these guys level. That way when I bolt it up, I can have an easy way to, to figure out how level it is side to side and if it's straight but then right here i put two little jack screws and so i tightened these down and then i jacked these jack screws in locked them down with some nuts that way this is nice and vertical although that's got a little bit of an angle and then on top up here just did some mounts to uh, mount everything up to the plate so let's take that one off and see what it looks like one thing for these the name of the game is to keep those glass scales clean that way you don't have to deal with contamination or cleaning them or things like that. So we'll pop this one off there real quick. All right, so for this one, it's a little more difficult. You can see that uh, I made a little uh, shield for the back just in case anything wanted to drip down onto the reader head. And it basically mounts to a piece of uh, angle iron, an old piece of uh, right angle. And uh, then you can see on the back side here, the little plate that comes with it. I just machined off the piece of it, made it flat, and then it lines up to the back side so it's easy to line everything up. So where the little shipping thing comes in, you can see right here, it's too wide to actually fit there when you mount everything up. So all I do is just cut that edge off a little bit on both sides. And then when you put it up in there, then you can use it as your alignment. So then you just pinch it up tight so you know it's level. You got the plate on the back so you know it can't move this way. And there's the little jack screws and the mount holes. So then all we gotta do is just notch out for the ways and for the screw in the middle. And that one's not too bad, just bolts right up. So we'll leave that one off because I got to pretty it up and uh, paint it. And then we'll head up here to the Z axis. All right, so we made it to the hard one, the Z axis. So let's get this little cover off here. All right, so this one was the most difficult of them. And as you can see, this handle normally comes this way, but I had to punch the pin out and burn it. So. In order to mount all this, you got to take the little handles off. Let's get them out of the way so we can see what's going on in here. All right, so the way this one works is this shaft I made, and it's got a flat on it over here, and then it bolts down to that regular piece that used to be the stop. And then over here on the side, there's a little screw that I drilled and tapped. And what it does is pushes against this so it holds everything tight, makes it slide up and down straight. And what that does is keeps this guy from moving back and forth as it goes up and down. So as you can see, when you move up and down, it stays nice and steady as it's running up and down. So inside of here, we'll take this one off and see what it looks like inside. Now we can take that off. So let me slip my little guide back in there. So back here, what I had to do is put a couple of little washers to compensate for the thickness of that plate right there. So I don't want to lose them. And there we go. So there's the reader head. I'll oh, just set him up top up here. So for the inside, what did we do? So well, we got to take this cover off so we can see. 
Now with the cover off, you can see what it looks like inside. And so the reader head is attached right here and that's fixed. You can see it's solid and it's in there and it's tight because of that little screw on the side right there. So see if I loosen this up, back that out a little bit, I'll readjust it when I put it back together. And you can see that there's movement just like that other machine. And that would be plenty of movement to throw off that reader head. So it's important to have something to fix that, like having that right there that tightens in. And then it lets it slide up and down, but it holds it fixed in place. And so this is a piece that came with the kit. And all I did was put some of those clinch nuts in there. And then clinch nuts in the cover. That holds the, the uh, protector on the front. And then the bar is connected in on the side right there. So just had to machine me a little bar. And like I say, I got to take this off and clean it up and smooth it out. That way it slides real free. So the bar, if you want to see how it hooks in, it's fixed to this with a big nut. And I just welded a nut on there and then bolted it down through the hole. And so we take that part off. It's just bolted to it. So now, when I push down, you can see it comes out. So this piece is actually held on by that to keep it straight, held into that hole to keep everything moving up and down. And then it hooks to it. So how did, how did this get separated? What I did, you can see that this actually is free to move now. And so it'll stay straight with it. And regardless of how much this tries to twist, that's not going to twist anymore. It's going to be held straight up and down. So to do that, you basically have to loosen it up in the back and shim it so that it's just perfectly smooth and it'll pivot back and forth. And then on the bottom and the top, I just used a piece of PVC pipe and then a band clamp right here and just clamp above and below it. And then that way it hooks right up onto it and it can slide back and forth. If this twists, because it's only held by that guide bolt on the side. If that twists around, it doesn't translate to my scale because it's free floating. And so then all of that goes together and it stays nice and vertical. And then that ties into here and the scale ties in with just some holes drilled in the head. So there we go. If I was doing it on the little green RF30 or RF31, whatever it is, it would look very similar. It would just be a shorter scale because it's not as tall as this one. And then I would have to make a thinner bar to match up with the smaller hole. But it would all function about the same way. All right. So that's how we put a set of scales on one of these gearhead mills with a digital readout. And we'll keep an eye on it. I'll periodically check it to make sure the scales are doing good. But for 300 bucks, I uh, can't complain. And uh, just a little bit of difficulty on the Z-axis to put it in. The Y-axis wasn't too bad, a little complicated. The X-axis was super easy, so it wasn't too bad at all. Took me about a day. Well, alrighty. Well, thanks for watching.